What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. I've got another Dell computer overview for you guys today. Some years ago, you guys may remember, I made a video on a Dell Optiplex 9020 small form factor business PC, and that video did pretty well, so I figured, why not record this one as well, now that I have this one instead. So that machine was a Haswell-based machine. This one is a little bit newer, but it is of the same class, and it's just, like I said, it's just a little bit of a, a newer machine. Uh, the Dell Optiplex line. Now, these Dell Optiplexes have been around for tw 30 years, I want to say. I want to say the first Optiplex came out in the mid-90s, and they have just been ubiquitous in business environments for pretty much that entire time. My whole job, actually, the one that I work now, <laughs> has a whole fleet of these. Uh, and so they're very, very common. They're quite good machines, and, you know, me being a historically Dell kind of guy, I like them. So, Anyway, here it is. This is a Dell Optiplex 3040. I believe that means that it's part of the 3000 series, which is a little bit lower end, although I'm really not sure what the difference is between the 37 and the 9000 series Optiplexes, because exterior-wise, they all look pretty much the same. But either way, we'll get into it. But again, this is a business class PC, and it's been updated a little bit. If you watched my previous video on the previous version of this, you can see that the case design is a little bit different. It's been modernized. It's a little bit of a darker gray here. You can see they updated the Dell logo to the more modern version instead of just the uh, Dell word. Uh, so there's that. And then if we look at the front, you can also see that the screen design on it is kind of like cross hatched now. It's a little bit different. It is a little dirty. I apologize for that. And then at the bottom, you can see this one does have a Core i5, and that is a Haswell based processor. Also on the front, you know, all you're going to see is just your power button. This does light up, which is, you know, pretty standard. We have a DVD RW drive, which is kind of nice. I was kind of surprised to see that in a machine like this, but this must not have been a complete base model machine, which is cool. Moving down a little bit more, we can see we have a headphone jack, and then you also have your HDD activity up here. This one has an SSD in it, which we'll look at later. Uh, but we have two USB 2.0 Type-A ports, and then two USB 3 Type-A ports, so that's pretty nice. And then there are also a host of ports on the back, which we'll get to. And then, like I mentioned, there's really nothing else down here, just the grill. So, if we turn the machine around, we can take a look at the back port situation, which honestly, I was kind of disappointed to see this, but it has been downgraded from the older 9020 that I did a video on. There are way less USB ports on it. I think there was at least six back here for a total of like 10 on the other one. So uh, anyway, let's start from the top. You can see we have an audio out and then the Windows 10 uh, logo, I guess. Uh, but what's nice is this does have built in HDMI and display port. So, you know, that's pretty uh, ubiquitous for modern displays and whatnot. And once again, just like the front, we have two USB 3 and two USB 2 ports and a gigabit Ethernet port right next to it. It looks like my friend Zach, who's the one that gave me this machine, probably had a graphics card in this thing at one point, which is why there's an empty slot there, but it no longer does. And then if we move down there, we just have a power supply. And I'm really not sure of the wattage, but it's probably not a whole lot. But lucky for you, we're going to be taking a look at that. But if we look at the other sides of the machine, there's really not much going on. On this side, there's some feet, so we can lay flat on a desk like this. Uh, under your display or whatever, but honestly with these small form factor machines I prefer them to be upright and then there's also feet on the bottom for that as well But I think they look best like this next to a monitor or whatever, but going on the top there is no uh, Latch like there was on the older one that I did a video on instead You just have thumb screws now, which we are going to take a look at next So let me reposition the camera and then we'll look at the internals of this machine real quick all right, this is about as vertical as I could get the camera, but the thumb screws are loose. They're supposed to be captive, but this one fell out, which, whatever, not a big deal. But if we remove the side cover, which also does have an integrated Kensington lock port or a hole on it, you'll see the internals of the machine. So pretty standard, you know, this is pretty typical for a, you know, business class PC. If we look down at the power supply here, let's see if we can see how many watts that guy is. And it is quite small. 180 watts it says total. Sorry, it took me a while to read that. My eyes aren't that good. Uh, so very, you know, low end power supply, but like I said, this is a, a not particularly power hungry PC. Um, but it does have a Haswell Core i5. I believe it's like a 6500 U or something like that. Uh, we have a CPU fan and heatsink for that there. We do have a SanDisk X110 SSD in it. I believe it's a 250 gig if I'm not mistaken. So there's that. And then 
I believe these are pretty easy to remove, although I forget. Okay, so the SSD comes out just like that, toolless removal, which is nice, and then we have the optical drive, uh, which I believe comes out here, and then underneath that, we have our memory, and I believe this computer only has one stick of RAM in it right now. I believe it has eight gigs, uh, but it does live under there. You can see the release tabs for it here. So there's that, and then we also do have another cooling fan in the front of the machine. Uh, which is you know pretty nice to see and then like I said this does support half height PCI Express cards we do have an X16 slot down here which I don't know if you guys can see too well let me see if I can there we go so we have an X16 there and then I believe an X4 next to it which is good for like a Wi-Fi card or something like that so all in all pretty uh, standard internal construction but just wanted to show you guys that real quick I'll go ahead and throw the cover back on which it just slides on like this close that guy up tighten the thumb screws and then we will go ahead and take a look at the actual computer booting it up and I'm sorry my camera's being a tool bag but that's just how it is uh, anyway I have a setup over here that we're gonna use and I'll go ahead and hook this thing up and we'll boot it up all right I've got the machine hooked up to our makeshift setup here so let's go ahead and power it on We have a Dell logo, pretty modern looking BIOS. It's been updated and boots up pretty darn fast, actually. So there you go. So that was like not even 15 seconds. So that it says these putting in work, but we'll go ahead and sign in here. And there we are. I even hooked up Ethernet so we can check out the internet a little bit. <laughs> so anyhow, let me just make sure the camera's adjusted properly. There we go. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look at the specs first off because that's what we came here to see. And also because I don't really remember them off the top of my head. <laughs> so there's that. We'll open up Specky and we'll go ahead and zoom in here. And you can see, yep, I was right. It is an Intel Core i5-6500 that runs at 3.2 gigahertz. Again, that is a Skylake base chip as it says there. We have eight gigabytes of single channel memory. It's probably 1600 megahertz or 1866 maybe I don't know let's check it out uh, yeah that'd be 1600 because it's dual channel or well it's single channel but you know what I mean it should be 1600 megahertz um, uh, there we go and then for the graphics we just have an Intel HD graphics 530 integrated graphics like I mentioned but you can put a low power GPU in these that does work and then we also have our 120 gigabyte uh, SanDisk SSD there and then the uh, DVD writer like I mentioned before. So that's the specs of the machine, which honestly, uh, it's still more than good enough for browsing the modern internet and doing, you know, basic office stuff. Uh, so let's go ahead and demonstrate that next, I guess. Let's go ahead and go to YouTube. And you know, it's not the uh, quickest machine in the world, but it does work. So let's go ahead and go to my channel. And uh, I don't know if it's going to have any sound, but let's just go ahead and play my latest video that's on there right now. Intel Display Audio, let's see. There we go. And as you can see, it it works just fine. It plays the video just fine. So it's still powerful enough to do what you need to do day to day. So that's that's good. And uh, yeah, these computers are still more than capable of, of doing that type of stuff. I don't really have any other applications or anything on here, but that's uh, pretty much it. This is a clean install. I just set this thing up not too long ago, actually. But it is uh, Windows 10 Pro, I believe. And obviously, this machine doesn't support uh, Windows 11, but it is what it is. Uh, most machines don't. I really don't know why Microsoft did that, but oh well, it is what it is. So, not too exciting. I apologize, I didn't have more software on this thing or anything like that, but this is just a little overview video as I typically do anyway. But that is the Dell Optiplex uh, 3040 small form factor PC. And I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.